Alrighty, so a few weeks ago I made a video about IBJJF rules and a few people asked me to do another video specifically about what is illegal and um, I'm doing that now. Before I go over what is illegal for each belt and age and whatnot, I should mention that the IBJJF rules are, are online. I mean, I printed them off, put them in my little binder here, you know, but uh, if you go to the IBJJF website, you can find these yourself. There's also videos on there, and, you know, so you can learn it that way, you know. And the page I'm talking about now, this is page 29 of uh, the IBJJF rules. So, um, you know, let's go. Without further ado, let's go. Here we go. So, the first one, uh, submission techniques stretching the legs apart. This is often called banana split. And that is, uh, if you're under, if you're, as you can see, if you're 12 and under, 4 to 12, you can't do it if you're 12 and under. But uh, as long as you're 13 and over, you can do it. I don't think I've ever seen anybody do banana splits in a tournament, but you have to be at least 13 to do it. Um, chokes with spinal lock. This one is exactly what it says it is. You can't choke a person and twist their head uh, unless you're at least 16 years old, you know, and a white belt. You know what I mean? Even if you're a green belt or whatever, if you're 15 and under, you can't do a choke with a spinal lock. And um, that is totally, totally up to the referee to decide what that is. But it's generally any choke where the person's head is getting twisted and uh, the referee doesn't like the look of it. You know, that can be bow and arrow, that can be north-south, that can be, you know, whatever. You know, uh, Japanese necktie or the, you know... Anyway, so if you're 15 or younger, right, you can choke the person, but you can't choke them with a spinal lock that involves their head being twisted or whatever. Uh, straight foot lock, same thing, as you can see. You have to be at least 16 years old to do a straight foot lock, also known as an Achilles lock. You know, no leg locks are allowed for kids, you know? That one is, uh, that's one of the ones where it just shocks me that people spend months or even years training, or they spend months or years training other people, and they don't know what is allowed and what is not allowed in the tournaments they entered. It just makes me shake my head, you know? I have, I've had to DQ kids for doing footlocks. I wouldn't say quite a few times, but quite a few times. And I mean, there was this one where this kid couldn't pass this other kid's guard, so he did a straight footlock on him. And then uh, the dad DQ'd him, I had to. And then the, and the other kid tapped, you know, I had to DQ the kid. And then the dad freaked out. And he said, why'd you DQ him? You know, he actually tried to talk to me outside off the mat. And I was like, I DQ'd him because he did a footlock, which is illegal for kids. And he's like, he doesn't even know how to do footlocks. And then he like sent me a video and like the tournament organizer, he sent us a video of the kid doing the footlock and said, he doesn't even know how to do these footlocks. And we were like, but... You just sent us a video of him. Anyway, whatever. Leg locks are not allowed for kids. Not straight foot locks, not pulls, not knee bars, not heel hooks, not nothing for kids. Um, forearm choke using the sleeve, also known as Ezekiel choke, right? This one where you like reach inside your sleeve and you're, you know, that one, you have to be at least 16 years old to do it. You know, even if you are a, you know, a 15 year old green belt or whatever, Nope, no Ezekiel. Um, and it doesn't matter how you get to it. You know, I remember I was refing at a tournament years ago and the coach was like trying to tell me that like the kid's allowed to do it because of the way he was setting up the Ezekiel. It's like, no, you can't. It's, it's illegal. You can't do an Ezekiel, you know. Just, even if it starts off as a collar choke, if it ends in Ezekiel, that's illegal. Um, guillotine choke. You have to be at least 16 to do a guillotine choke. I remember once I was refereeing at this tournament and Kid A did a double leg takedown and Kid B, and bear in mind both these kids were kids, Kid B then did a guillotine choke, right? So in that situation, I couldn't give Kid A the points because he was in a submission hold, but Kid B was doing something illegal. And then the, and the coach 
that of the first kid who did the takedown. He's like, where's the points? Where's the points? Where's the points? You know? And the tournament organizer had told us they didn't want us like uh, immediately DQing the kids, right? And so I was uh, telling the kid doing the guillotine. I was like, guillotines are illegal. Stop. Guillotines are illegal. Let go. Guillotines are illegal. Let go. And then um, he let go of the guillotine and then like got back to his feet. And then in a situation like that, what do you do? The kid would have gotten two points, but the other kid did something illegal, right? And then when I told him it was illegal and he let go, he got back up and now he's not being taken down again, or he's not down anymore. So the first kid doesn't get his points. You know what I mean? Uh, I think I ended up, I think that happened, I think twice more. And I ended up DQing the kid for doing guillotines because I'd had enough of yelling at him. I was like, you know what? I'm done. I got to tell you three times and three separate occasions not to guillotine. This match is over, you know? So that was a frustrating occasion though. And that's why the IBJJF and under IBJJF rules, as soon as you <laughs> as soon as you do something illegal, if you're a kid or a black belt or whatever, the second you do something illegal, you're done. It doesn't matter if you're doing it, you know, if you're doing the guillotine, oh, he's doing it as a sweep. It doesn't matter. If you do something illegal, you're out of there. And you have these other smaller tournaments that use modified IBJJF rules and they try not to DQ people because, you know, they want to be, you know, cool. But then you get people that don't know the rules and are doing stuff, and sometimes it just becomes a frustrating situation. Anyway, um, guillotine choke is illegal for people that are 15 and younger, right? Same thing with omoplata. And uh, there's a lot of versions of omoplata, you know? And uh, they're not all mentioned here. There's Marcelo Plata and Tarico Plata and, you know, Gogo Plata and all this other stuff. I remember once I was refereeing in a tournament years ago. And this coach came up to me and he asked me if Marcelo Plata was legal for kids. And I was like, no. And he goes, but it's not on here. Like, I'm like, Marcelo Plata, or whatever you want to call it, is a subcategory of Omo Plata. So it is illegal for kids. Just because there's different versions of the things doesn't mean they're okay. You know, like Z-Lock isn't on here, but you can figure out that Z-Lock is a subcategory of these other things, like down here, lock twisting the knee. It's illegal for everybody, you know? So, silliness. Um, so anyway, guillotine, you have to be 16 and over, Roma Plata, 16 and over. Um, triangle pulling the head. If you're a kid, you can triangle them, but you can't pull the head. Pull your own knees, that's okay. Pull your shin, that's okay. But you can't pull their head, because that is a subcategory, or it sort of a version of this other one, chokes with spinal lock. Uh, arm triangle, right? There's lots of kind of chokes that are arm triangles. The darse is an arm triangle. The anaconda is an arm triangle. I mean, there's certain other ones. The, I've seen it done from north-south, and, you know, the Peruvian necktie, I guess you could say, is an arm triangle. The Japanese necktie is an arm triangle. You know, anything that involves you including their arm and their head together is an arm triangle. And you can't do it if you're 15 or younger, you know? Um, for all of those, you have to be at least 16. And, um, you know, that's okay for white belts and, you know, blue, brown, black, everybody, right? Um, <clears throat> moving on. Here's what blue belts can do that white belts can't do and kids can't do. Lock inside the closed guard with legs compressing kidneys or ribs. So basically just squeezing the hell out of them with your closed guard. If they're going to tap to that, you have to be at least blue belt to do that. Same thing with wrist lock. You know, white belts can't do wrist locks. Kids can't do wrist locks. I remember I was refereeing a tournament years ago between these two blue belts. And one blue belt wrist locked the other, right? And the guy tapped. And then afterwards, the guy looks at me. And he was so mad. He's like, hey, that was a wrist lock, you know? And I just laughed and laughed, and I was like, dude, wrist locks are okay for blue belts. And he had no idea. Like, he had spent, I don't know, a couple of years training to get his blue belt, but he hadn't spent the 15 minutes necessary to read the rules. Like, silliness. Uh, <laughs> I just went and sat in the stands and just laughed and laughed. I'd been having a kind of a crazy day, coaches yelling at me and stuff, and that was the straw that broke the camel's back. A blue belt that doesn't know wrist locks. Dude, he, that was a wrist lock! Yeah! Wrist locks are legal for blue belts. Anyway. Um, next one. 
Single leg takedown while attacking athlete has his head outside his opponent's body. So if you're going to do a single leg takedown with your head on the outside, you have to be at least a blue belt to do it, right? If you do that as a, uh, as a white belt or as a kid, the referee's going to stop it. He's going to start the match over again or whatever. He's not going to penalize you for that one, but uh, he's not going to let it happen because he doesn't want you to dive down onto your own head. That's why there's these asterisks beside it because that's illegal, but you don't get penalized. And bear in mind, there's no difference between blue and purple. Okay, obviously purple belts are in theory better, but in terms of the rules, there's no difference between being a blue belt and being a purple belt. See, up here it says blue and purple belt. But brown and black, now there's new things, right? See, bicep slicer. You can do that if you're a brown or a black belt. See, it's now legal. Um, why are bicep slicers illegal for people purple and under? Because they can really mess you up. You know, people tend not to tap the bicep slicers. I mean, they hurt, but they're like, ah, this isn't going to break anything. And then, boom, their forearm breaks, and there's blood spilling all over the mat. You know, calf slicer, same thing, except for the, you know, less likelihood something's going to, like a bone's going to break. But bicep slicer, calf slicer, you have to be at least a brown belt. Knee bar, you have to be a brown belt. Toe hold, you have to be a brown belt. Heel hook, illegal, unless it's uh, brown and black nogi. Same thing for locks twisting the knees and knee reaping. That's illegal. If you're wearing a kimono, that's illegal. Um, and in a straight foot lock, turning in the direction of the foot, not under attack. So if you're foot locking his, I guess it would be his right leg, you know, and you're attacking it with your left arm, you have to roll to your left. You know, you can't, you have to roll in a direction where you are going in the same direction as the side the foot is on. You see what I mean? Maybe that doesn't make any sense. If I'm saying anything that's confusing you, come and ask me. You see me at a tournament, come ask me and I'll tell you what's up. Or maybe I'll just tell you to go to hell. Nah, I won't do that. I'm a nice guy. Um, and you can see that those four things, heel hook, twisting the knee, knee reaping, and turning in the direction of the foot not under attack, those are allowed if you're brown or black. Nogi, right? But there's some stuff here that's illegal for everybody. The first one being the slam. What is a slam? A slam is not a throw. A slam is not a sweep. A slam is when somebody is already on the ground, and you're very likely above them, and you pick them up, and you smash them back into the ground again. Kind of like um, when Rampage did it to Ricardo Arona, or uh, the reverse body lift that uh, Alexander Karelin does. You know what I mean? A slam is not a hard throw. If that were the case, every judo throw would be illegal, right? But a hard double or a shoulder throw or an osoto gary or whatever, just because you hit the mat hard, <laughs> it doesn't make it a slam. A slam is when someone's already on the ground and you pick them up and then you slam them back into the ground again, probably trying to cause them injury. This happens from if someone's in their closed guard and then maybe they triangle you and you pick them up or... Uh, Let's say they're turtled, you know, and you just grab them around the waist and then lift them and then slam them back down again, right? That's that's not allowed. Um, spinal lock without choke. That's a neck crank, and that's illegal for everybody. That's even illegal, as I recall, in ADCC, even when there's like 100 grand on the line. Because nobody wants to get their neck broken, and nobody should be thinking, you know what? This feels like it's going to break my neck, but I'm not going to tap to it because, you know, I want to win gold or whatever. Anyway, spinal lock without choke, neck cranks, illegal for everybody um, in IBJJF rules. Scissor takedown, that's also known as kane basame, you know, the flying scissors, you know. That's legal in ADCC, and I think it's legal in EBI and uh, other ones, but under IBJJF rules, the scissor takedown is illegal because people tend to get their knees broken by it. That's why it's also illegal in judo, by the way. By the way, bending the fingers backwards, you can't do that. Um, grab the opponent's belt and throw him on the floor on his head when defending a single leg situation while the opponent's head is on the outside of his body. So if someone's shooting a single leg on you and their head is to the outside, you can't just use that as an opportunity to drive their head into the floor and, you know, spike them, as it's called. And then this last one, suplex takedown technique, landing with the opponent's head or neck on the ground. So here, if you want to lift a person and 
you know, I don't want to say it's legal to suplex them, but you can lift a person and throw them to the mat as long as you throw them onto their back or onto their side or onto their belly, but don't throw them on their head. You know, that's not nice. That's what I call spiking. Um, and those are the um, 26 things that are noted in the illegal moves. You know, if you look at the, uh, here, I'll move my book over here. If you look at the IBJJF rules, which are available on IBJJF.com, what page is it on? It's on page 29, I think. Here, hold on. Yeah, see, look. See? It's on page 29. And then on the next two pages, it has pictures of all the various things that are illegal, you know? So, if you spent... Once you've spent however many months or years or whatever practicing jiu-jitsu and you're entering a tournament, hey, here's a wacky idea. Maybe uh, spend 10, 15 minutes figuring out what's allowed and what's not allowed in your division because it would be a shame to get, you know, disqualified. And here's one more thing I'd like to share before we part ways. You cannot do something illegal with... But you cannot do a heel hook and then when you get DQ, would say, I was doing it as a sweep. It doesn't matter. If you walk into a bank with a gun, they don't care why you're walking into the bank with a gun. That's going to be trouble. You're going to end up in jail. You know what I mean? If you're doing a knee bar as a sweep or if you're doing a, you know, if you're a kid doing an Ezekiel, and you're like, oh, I was doing it as a positional escape. It doesn't matter what your ultimate goal was. You can't do an illegal move. It's illegal. Um, and then, like as I said, in IBJJF rules, you are supposed to get DQ'd the moment you go for it. It doesn't matter if they haven't tapped yet. The second you do something illegal, it's supposed to be the referee yells paro, the referee disqualifies you, and that's that. But in other smaller tournaments, they might not do that. They might try and give you, a, you know, whatever it's called, a chance to, you know, still win the match even though you've done something illegal. But, um... If you do something illegal and the referee disqualifies you, don't get angry at the referee. Be angry at yourself and be angry at your coach. And if you're a coach and you haven't read these rules, what the hell is wrong with you? Read the rules. How can you possibly give accurate advice to your competitors if you don't know the rules of the tournament in which they're competing? Um, and if you see me at a tournament and you want to come over and say hello, come over and say hello. You know, I'm a friendly guy, even though I sound like a jerk right now. 